Yo guys, Tasteless over here. We've got a great game for you today. This is Shine versus Tengu. Um, Shine, I think this guy does not need any introduction. Whether you're from StarCraft 1 or StarCraft 2, Shine has been a legend. Um, from even observing in the GSL to getting to the ASL finals, probably the best cheeser out of all the cheesy players we've had. Uh, a real innovator. This is a ladder match he played against Tengu. Tengu is one of our newer players here in the ASL. He's been a ladder beast for a long time, but he's here now um, competing, and I want to see what kind of game these two players are going to give us. The map is retro, and this map, dude, is a headache, at least for me. It is a map. I always thought the center area was bigger. It really actually isn't. Um, that can be a little bit tricky for TVZ. I think in other matchups, it's more impactful, but... <coughs> Excuse me. Um... The other thing about this map is that this is a very straight pathway up here. Out of the Terran's natural, all if you follow my cursor, all the way up through here. And then up to here to where the Zerg is. So you're in really close proximity. There are special rushes you can do. When you're close to each other like this, will this game be one of them? I don't know. Let's let's find out. Um, but uh, other than that, I think you, know, you could think of this map a little bit like a... Uh, fighting Spirit, a modified Fighting Spirit. Although I think it's a little bit more challenging to play on the Fighting Spirit. So we've got our drone coming down. And the hatchery is going to be starting right over here. This is hatchery first. Do not be fooled. This is not some kind of aggro bunker play. This is Terran walling in so he can expand. <coughs> While we've got downtime here, I'm sorry I keep coughing. I'm recording all these casts because I have a, a trip to LA. So if you're watching this, I'm not. If it just came out, I'm not in, in Korea right now. I'll be back uh, making more regular content soon. Do me a favor and uh, like the video, leave a comment, subscribe. That really helps me. It's not easy to grow on YouTube. It really does come down to you guys um, giving me the thumbs up and, and you know giving the channel some love. Uh, we got a lot of big plans on this channel. Uh, I want to do more, obviously, StarCraft 1 stuff, but other esports stuff, other you know, some of these newer RTSs coming out, I want to make stuff there as well. Uh, and also check out tastelessthreads.com. It's my merch site. we got a bunch of awesome stuff I think you'd like. Uh, hopefully this game picks up in a second here. A little bit of downtime as we've got the command center about to be made here at the Natural. And this is like a really healthy, greedy, SCV cranking build. No corners were cut to get this out, and no punishes will be made here from Shine uh, since he went, you know, for a hatchery first. Sometimes these extra greedy builds really pay off against standard play, and that's what Shine's doing. Now, I said Shine is a, a, a cheesy, crazy player, and he is. I'm not wrong about that, but a lot of his stuff comes in the mid game. We've seen him do weird things before, but a lot of times it's off of, like, layer tech. That being said, He's also actually great at standard play. It's why he's very hard to play against. Some games you just won't do anything weird and just win with a normal game and you go, oh, all right, well, I made way too many turrets or, you know, defended for way too long because I just thought this guy was going to do something else like that. Okay, so the refinery is almost done. This SCV, you got to be careful with that SCV when you're scouting. Remember... It never heals on its own, unlike the drone on the probe. Artos is probably somewhere right now, nodding slowly as I said that. Uh, but it's true. That's one of the burdens for the Terran race, is you really have to not let that worker ever get touched. So we've got the drone coming out. He's going to take a third hatchery pretty fast. And along with this, the Spire is going to come down. Everything looking standard so far. And this drone's going to come down here and take the bottom right main. This is about as, as standard, commonplace TVZ as you could expect. Some games they do it after the mutas are out. Other games they do it earlier. Oh, hold up. He's going to take a nat, a natural. But the SCV is going to scout it. So why would you take the natural? Right now he sees it, but let's, let's explore why, because it might not be obvious to a lot of you guys. Normally, you take here or here, and you do that because bases like this, they have this ramp. If you put two or three lurkers up here, the infantry can't get up it. But when Terran finally gets the scanners, which I think he'll get a little bit later. Okay, he actually starts it now. Excuse me. 
If you don't, if you can't get an SCV to scout because these etlings wouldn't let you, you would scan here and here first, and you might not have any idea where the third base is. So that's why Shine's doing that. That's a, a very clever move, but it's been scouted. So basically, Shine's taking an unsafe third base. And it's unsafe because you don't have a tiny ramp you can put lur lurkers up to protect yourself. The attack would come in right from here. So we've got the um, Muta's about to hatch. We have plus one air weapons coming. It's going to be four racks. So this is like a real powering play here. He wants to assert himself on the map coming up. The Mutas are going to come out. I'm going to turn off the... Sorry, I'm like playing like with map hacks on here. We've got... Sorry. Uh, there's the Fog of War. So we've got the Mutas coming up. And I got to say, Tengu's got really good defense. I mean, I don't think that the Mutas can get in there anywhere, really, and do any damage. Not even a little bit. The third gas is being taken here for Shine. Everything looking good so far. And, um, you know, honestly, it's not stopping the Mutas. The Mutage. The SCV comes in here to scout. He sees, okay, third gas is being taken. So this is one of these plays. Sometimes you stop at around 11 Mutas. Oh my god, he just like cuts right through here. He's just going to be in the middle of the base. This was not an even spread of turrets. This was more of a peripheral, a kind of a, an exterior defense. So he comes and he does the damage. He gets out. Now the infantry have moved out. They're going to be pushing. And that's why these mutas had to come out. You need to combo these mutas with the zerglings. He takes his swipes. Did Tengu get baited into the middle of the map a little bit too far? Oh my god. I think he did. He completely wipes this. We have two Marines. That's not enough to really do anything. Maybe to kill these drones. Hey, there's that. If I were him, I'd stim these and just go for it. The Mutas are going to come back up. Terran's in a little bit of hot water. But again, with four barracks, you replenish this pretty fast. Real quick here, we've got those Marines coming up. It looks like two Lings are going to come out here. Oh my god, he's still able to do that damage. Remember, the gas is everything in this matchup, so the fact that this is happening is a big deal. Mutas are going to come take down this turret here. Oh, actually, the SCV repair is pretty crazy. What? Oh, Shine is getting whooped over here. Meanwhile, uh, plus one air attack is done. It's been done for a while. So these are 10 damage mutas. He's not stopping. He's not pulling out from these mutas. He's got the drones being uh, refilled here into these gases. Terran's going to come out here. I guess this is an unfortunate uh, old control group here that these are on. The mutas now. Um, he's got to be careful not to get too boxed in. I think though with this amount of damage, he can kind of just go wherever he wants. This is looking worse and worse for the Terran. He even takes out the SCVs that are um, building the starport. So, I mean, this is getting pretty bad. You do need to either get Valkyries or Science Vessels or something. He's actually just going to go for it. He gets a Force Cancel. He's going to come up through here. Anything he can get, he will take. The ramp is oftentimes a great way to create a bottleneck here as the Marines try to come down. Going for the depot even. Just going to take a peek back here. It is Hive Tech coming. Lurkers are going to be a possibility here. I don't know, man. It does feel like maybe Terran took too much of a beating. I mean, that's going to be tough. What does he actually have infantry-wise? He's got about maybe a control group and a half of Medic Marine. Here come the Mutas again. He's going to try to kill this SCV making the starport. It's so crazy. Now, he's got to be careful. The longer he stays in here, the more likely he is that the Marines are going to surround him. I mean, we don't even have... What is this? This is four SCVs mining over here. He's got... Okay, he's got a little bit over a dozen mining minerals at his, his main, but, like, this is pretty bad, man. 
Lurker Tech almost done. Double Evo Chamber Hive finishing moments away from now. Um, it is 1.4k gas, guys. This is pretty wild. By the way, I mean, Shine is really winning off of his mechanical abilities here. It really does reinforce what I'm saying. Like, he's got some sneaky, cheesy stuff, but, like, he's actually just, like, a solid powerhouse player. Now he's going to come over here. He could probably keep doing damage. A scan here. He's going to have, what, three lurkers? Is that three total? Yes, three. And the mutas are not going to stop. That's going to be it. Tengu taps out. GG. Pretty impressive game there from Shine. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I uh, appreciate you taking the time out of your day to join me as I cast these games. Um, and I hope to see you again in a future video. Uh, like and subscribe. And uh, stay safe out there. Uh, and also join me on my Twitch stream, Tasteless TV, where I cast these games. Bye-bye.